Natasha, I, I want to uh, use my time here uh, to, to, to perhaps provide some baseline here, which I think is going to be critical. We talk about, you know, Senator Begich is right. We recognize that there is conflict between, between our tribes and, and the state in terms of areas of jurisdiction. But I think we also recognize that, that without funding for our tribal courts, this is going to be exceedingly difficult to, to advance. And so what I'm trying to, to do is to work to establish some baseline funding for our tribal courts in, in, in Alaska so that resources are available, available to continuously operate our courts, invest in the training of our tribal court judges and our staff. Uh, I hear from so many that they're so desperately in need. And, and uh, uh, Assistant Secretary Washburn is sitting behind you. He's going to get this question from me when, when he comes before uh, the dais here, too. But I'm, I'm the, the Republican, the top Republican on interior approach, and we're looking very critically at how we can establish uh, base funding for, for our Alaska tribes here. And um, so what I'd like for you to pr try to provide the committee today, and if you can't do it today, if we can get information um, later, but what would you figure the average cost to, to run a successful tribal court in one of your villages um, is. And what I'm, what I'm trying to establish here is provide the administration an estimate of the need on what it will, what it will take to adequately, and hopefully beyond adequately, fund our tribal court system in, in the state of Alaska. Do you have any baselines that you can share? I don't, off the top of my head, have a baseline, but just um, <clears throat> most of our tribal courts right now are volunteer. Right. Our judges are volunteer. Right. Some of our clerks might get paid, but some of our clerks are volunteer. Our social workers, um, you know, we, it's hard to retain them because they get paid very little. But knowing, um, knowing the state system, especially on child protection, you go into a state court in a child protection case and you're sitting there with probably at least six attorneys, usually eight right. state appointed attorneys. And when tribal courts have those cases, none of those are attorneys are present. You're not paying for any of that. None of the court costs, none of the flying back and forth from the village to an urban center. So just in child protection alone, you're saving just in one hearing thousands of dollars. So I look forward to getting um, to you specific figures, but it would depend on um, the size of the tribe, how many cases they're taking at an annual basis, but um. well, and I, I appreciate that. And if your folks could could really try to put some some thought into some some hard numbers, because this is something that I think we need to be able to establish to to the administration where this need the, the need is clearly there, and it's not just for the day to day operation; it's for the training. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, we've, we've got the conferences that go on. Well, you've got to be able to bring the folks into the conferences. There is, there is a very clear need here for greater resources to be directed. And I, rather than just kind of pulling numbers out of the air, if we can work to identify what our baseline might be. And I, I do have a couple other questions. Um, my, my colleague has returned, Senator